Question number eight, Kevin Haig. Thank you, Mr Speaker. My question is to the Associate Minister of Health and asks, will he now use his power under Section 32 of the Public Health and Disability Act 2000 to direct Capital and Coast District Health Board to initiate the transitional support plan for Ashley Peacock, which recommends a pathway to a community placement immediately? And if not, why not? The Honourable Pesitar Sanders Winger. <coughs> Mr. Speaker. Mr Speaker, that member should know that what he has asked for is illegal and would breach both the Public Health and Disability Act 2000 and the Crown Entities Act of 2004. The legal advice that I have received confirms that, as Minister, I cannot issue directions to district health boards requiring or compelling them to provide specific treatment to specified persons. Supplementary. Supplementary question, Kevin Hay. Does the Minister accept the findings of the National Intellectual Disability Care Agency, who found that Ashley's seclusion environment is exacerbating his condition? And if so, why has he allowed Capital and Coast DHB to sit on the recommendations for his transition plan for months? without even appointing a project manager for Ashley's case. The Honourable Mr Pistar Speaker, Mr. Speaker um, <clears throat> like many New Zealanders, I have sympathy for the parents of uh, Mr Peacock. However, what I, I am informed, sir, that the District Health Board and the Ministry of Health are working alongside the family to provide for a transition plan for Mr Peacock to be placed into the community. Supplementary. Supplementary question, Kevin Haig. How does the Minister reconcile his government's treatment of Ashley Peacock and his answers today with New Zealand's last periodic report on the United Nations Convention Against Torture, which identified the irreversible psychological harms of long-term seclusion such as Ashley has endured? Mr. The Speaker. Honourable Pesitar Sam Lotterwinger. Mr Speaker, what I say to that member is that this case is complex. Mr Ashley clearly has a mental illness and he also has developmental disabilities. But what is paramount in this case is the safety of both Mr Peacock and those around him. And the transition plan that has been formulated by the parties that I referred to in, in the earlier answer is, um, is paramount that the safety of Mr Peacock is, is, is at, at the front of all these considerations. Supplementary, Mr Speaker. Supplementary question, Kevin Hay. Given that Ashley has been predominantly held in effectively solitary confinement for more than five years now, why is the Associate Minister ignoring the Human Rights Commission the Ombudsman and now the National Intellectual Disability Care Agency, who have all recommended his transition out of seclusion without delay. Mr. Speaker, the Honourable Pesitar, Mr. Mr. Speaker I, I said in the first answer that that member was wrong, and I'll say in this answer he is again wrong. He has not been held, at, held in, in um, solitary uh, seclusion for that period of time. In 2014, for example, he was held in seclusion for 68 hours. That's one and a half hours on average per week. Point of order, Kevin Hay. Uh, Mr Speaker, uh, in his answer to the primary question, the minister indicated that he had received legal advice uh, and I, I ask that he table that advice. Well, well, I'm not sure the member can. If he was quoting, the member can certainly ask whether the Minister was quoting from a legal document at the time he gave an answer. If that, if was the minister doing that? Sorry, sir. Was the minister quoting from a legal document as he oh, gave his answer? He was not. Quoting legal opinion. Oh, that sort of legal opinion. Mm. All right. Qu oh, supplementary question, Porto. Why did he say, and I quote, I've been given reassurances that the Health Board are working closely with the family on a solution, end quote, 
When sources close to the family claim they have been excluded from meetings with Capital and Coast DHB management and senior officials. The Honourable Pesitar Sam Well, Mr yeah. Speaker, again, that member is wrong. Um, the advice that I have been given is that they are working closely alongside the family for a transition plan for this for this individual, and it's sad, it's very sad, Mr Speaker, Order. that members opposite are using this case as a political football to advance their political interests. Question number nine, 